Debriefing after the, after the simulation will follow immediately after the experience in a room away from the, the actual scenario. This gives students an opportunity to reflect on their performance and on the process. Participation from all members of the group is key to a successful debriefing. Okay, students, what do you think you did well and what do you think you could do a little bit differently next time? I'm very proud of our group. I thought they did a wonderful job. I think that they looked professional. They acted professional in the room. They put an iron to that uniform. There are no wrinkles. I felt as a family member that I was dealing with professionals because of their appearance and um, how they pulled me into the, um, the you know, interacted with me, and they didn't just put me to a corner and pretend I wasn't there. So I appreciated that um, they were able to um, teach me and explain to me what was happening to my husband. So I thought they did a wonderful job there. One thing I thought of was um, when Kathy gave me the finger stick result, when we figured out that it was 50, it occurred to me that I never asked when I received a report when, what his last finger stick was or when it was. Um, I sh that's something that I should have asked um, during report and didn't. Um, what about you, Kath? I agree with that. And the other thing that we should have thought about and we didn't is because we got an abnormal finger stick, we would have wanted to have rechecked that. Right. So when I got the 50, we should have rechecked that finger stick to, to verify right. that that's what it was before we, we pushed the D50. We also could have. I mean, we would have still, if it were low, we still would have acted on it, but we also could have called the lab to see if what his, because his labs were sent at six, what he was at six, if he hadn't had a finger stick then. Mm -hmm. I noticed as the um, charge nurse, but also watching and trying to take in all that was happening, um, that was kind of difficult because you had lots of information coming at you and you had to, from the report, you had to write down what, the, the report vitals were and then what was happening during the scenario so that got a that was a little bit much but um, you know able to do it and that's what I guess happens in real life um, I did notice when you guys entered the room there was the the um, nobody ever um, checked ID that I could see but that's but there was a family member at the bedside and we just started right in um, conversing with the family member so I think we have to remember that you know, part of that medication, um, even before you did the chem stick, would be to check that ID. I thought one of the reasons why our group did so well is because we were well prepared for our scenario by completing our homework in a timely fashion. And we were able to actualize the theory content by learning what hypoglycemic reactions were and to be able to, you know, look at that the night before so that when the family member asked some questions, they were able to provide some information. And it was nice to see what we're reading in the book come alive in an actual scenario. I thought that was very helpful. I hope we get another assignment. I think the other thing that was good about that was we, when the family member said he had a reaction like this yesterday, we followed up with what that reaction was so that we could see is he reacting the same way today and are we going towards hypoglycemic or is there something else going on. Um, I think um, the other thing to remember was we also, we washed our hands, we introduced ourselves, Patty explained her role, she also explained my role and we were talking to both the family member and the patient so that everybody knew who was going to be doing what. I, the other thing that I think if I could butt in here would be that um, the family member was really treated with respect by the nurses at the bedside even though she was pushing the mounds bar issue you know I'm going to give them a mounds bar that's what I'm supposed to do you know sometimes you and it, Patty just really treated her well that's not exactly the way that we're going to treat him today um, we have a you know a policy. They just treated her with respect, and that's a huge therapeutic communication piece that we always need to remember to, you know, to include in our real life as well as simulations. And that's a very realistic expectation of what you will find at the bedside is the family member who has uh, plays an integral role in in the patient's well-being. 
and has a lot of input and will also exert a fair amount of pressure on you when you are already under pressure. How did that make you feel? It was a little hard having um, a family member there just asking. You, you, you have a mindset of what you want to do and go into the room, get done, and to just constantly have her um, talking to you mm -hmm. was, was hard. The other thing but she also, excuse me, it provided cues. It was very important that she um, brought up that he had had a similar experience yesterday. It helps bring the, um, the symptoms together, you know, that he was shaky, that he had it yesterday. He was, had a heart rate that was elevated. Um, was there mm -hmm. something? Well, one of the things, too, as nurses, we always have to prioritize, and so the family member provided that clue as I was getting vital signs that we really needed to manage the low blood sugar first, and Patty was right there doing that and explained that to the family member, but the family member will provide cues for you, too, so you always want to pay attention to what they're and if the simulation had gone on farther, about the time we stopped the simulation, when it was when I would be calling the doctor, but during a full-length simulation, that would be my, the rest of my job would be to call the doctor and give all that information. So keeping that together, like I said before, is a little bit more challenging, I and think. And implementing whatever order right, she would right. receive. <clears throat> See, I thought you were being a little picky last week in clinical when you said we had to understand policies because I was like, well, we have opportunity when we're there to read policies. They're on a computer. And I understand that maybe technology is not your thing yet. But see, the policies are there, but I understand now how fast you have to activate it, and it's not always going to give you opportunity to be able to look at a policy. So I'm going to take that piece of advice a lot more seriously. Excellent point. Thank you. That concludes an example of a debriefing period. Normally the debriefing session lasts about 20 minutes or so.